everyone. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Google's newest AI model, the Gemini Experimental 1121. And over the last few weeks, there's been a bit of competition between Google's Gemini models and OpenAI. Google released Gemini Experimental 114 about a week ago, and this was followed by OpenAI's update to ChatGPT 4.0 just a few days later. And now Google has introduced the newest experimental model, which is the 1121 model. So in this video, we're going to be exploring a number of prompts to see whether these recent updates have really improved this Google experimental model. Now, what's really interesting is that if we go to Chatbot Arena, Leadership Board, what we'll see is that Gemini Experimental 1121 has ranked number one above ChatGPT 4.0, above Gemini Experimental 114, which is the one that they just released a week ago, above O1 Preview, O1 Mini, and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And if we look at the different categories where it's ranked number one, surprisingly, you're going to see that Gemini Experimental 1121 ranks number one across a number of categories categories such as hard prompts, hard prompts with the style control, coding, maths, it's number one in creative writing, instruction following, the longer queries, and the only one that's actually gotten number two is style control, which looks at the user-friendly formatting and presentation. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be testing the Gemini Experimental 1121 model across a number of prompts in these different categories to really see whether it deserves that number one spot on the leadership board. In order for us to get started, what we're going to be doing is not just looking at the Gemini Experimental 1121 model, but what we're going to be doing is also comparing it with the Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is actually quite a good model from Gemini. So we're going to start off with a tricky question to see its ability to reason and to problem solve. So I'm going to add a question here that says, is, I have three brothers. Each of my brothers has two brothers. My sister also has three brothers. How many sisters and brothers are there? And I'm going to run this and we're going to see how it performs across the 1121 model and the 1.5 Pro. So if we look at the response here, we can see that both responses have actually given us the incorrect answer. And if we look at the reasoning here, it says you and your brothers, the statement, I have three brothers, tells us that there are a total of four brothers, you and your three brothers. The statement, each of my brothers has two brothers, doesn't add new brothers, you're all brothers to each other. So that's, in its opinion, still four. Sisters, brothers, the statement, my sister has three brothers, confirms the set of brothers, as you are all brothers to your sister as well. So here, four brothers and one sister. And then here, there's four siblings, three brothers and one sister. Now, let's try that same problem with ChatGPT 01's preview, which we know has the highest reasoning ability. So I'm going to add this here in ChatGPT 01 preview. And you can see straight away that the reasoning of O1 preview is really unmatched at this stage. So it says to solve this problem, we need to determine the number of brothers and sisters in the family based on the given statements. I have three brothers. Each of my brothers has two brothers. My sister also has three brothers. Now let's analyze each statement step by step. Determine the number of brothers. So statement one tells us I have three brothers. This means that there are at least three brothers in the family. Determine if I am included among the brothers. So now it's bringing in the I factor, which was completely ignored by the Gemini model. So we go back to this and it says, if I were male, a brother, then there would be four brothers in total. However, statement two says each of my brothers has two brothers. If there were four brothers, each brother would have three brothers. This contradicts the statement that each brother has only two brothers. Therefore, I must be female. And it's derived that actually this problem is in fact looking at it from a female perspective. And then number three, confirm the number of brothers and then determine the number of sisters. And then it does the total count. So the total siblings is five. There are three brothers and two sisters in the family, which is actually the correct answer. So we can see that chat GPT 01 preview is still number one in this kind of tricky reasoning problem solving questions. So the next thing I want to compare is analyzing how it does with a table from an image and comparing the analysis across these two models. So I'm just going to attach here my screenshot of a table from a research paper. And I'm just going to add here a prompt that says, analyze this table and provide me with the key insights. Okay, so again, the first thing you're going to see is that the Gemini 1.5 Pro is a lot quicker and a lot more concise. So it comes back with a response in about 12.4 seconds. And you can see the table explores differences between research intensive and teaching centered universities regarding influential factors, which are age and gender and student activity dimensions. And here are the key insights. It talks about the age is significantly different. Gender shows a marginal difference. 
we've got significant differences in activity dimensions, all four activity dimensions, so statistically significant differences at the 0 0.001 level. Uh, it talks about the research intensive universities show higher engagement, which is correct. Okay, now let's look at the response that we've gotten from Gemini's experimental 1121. So you can see already that it's a lot more detailed. So again, all four activity dimensions show statistically significant differences. Coursework and exam research intensive universities have a higher mean score than teaching centered universities, suggesting a greater emphasis on coursework and exams in research intensive institutions. Okay, whereas in the other model, we just got coursework and exam students at research intensive universities rate this aspect higher. So we've got a lot more explanation here. Work experience and relevant workshops. Again, research intensive universities have a higher mean score compared to teaching centered universities. This implies a stronger emphasis on work experience and relevant workshops in research intensive institutions so you can see that it's not only coming back with the results but it's coming back with the implications as well i think i like this response a lot more it talks about the significance levels as us an overall conclusion and then it adds the important considerations here so similar to the note that was added in this model so i wanted to understand um, a table or results in more detail this is one model that i definitely start considering using um, in terms of depth and in terms of understanding and and of providing implications and underlying uh, factors as well. So for the next prompt, we're going to be looking at whether there has been improvement in its creative writing, which, as we saw on the leadership board, is now ranked number one. So I'm just going to add a simple prompt here that says, write a creative story on a boy who gets lost in space. And again, I'm going to be comparing it with the Gemini 1.5 Pro model. So as expected, the Gemini 1.5 Pro is a lot faster than the Gemini Experimental 1121 model. But what about in terms of actual content? Is there an improvement? Is there a, an enhancement in quality style? Now, to be fair, my prompt was very basic without a lot of context. So if we look at what Gemini 1121 has come back with, the hum was the last thing Leo remembered, a low resonant thrum that vibrated through the floor of his father's spaceship, the Stardust Drifter lulling him into a nap. He'd snuck aboard, hidden amongst the crates of hydroponic lettuce, yearning for an adventure beyond the dusty red plains of Mars. He was 10 years old, with eyes the color of nebulae, and a heart that yearned for the stars. I can honestly say there is an improvement with Gemini Experimental 1121. I think that's something that you would be able to probably work with with better prompting. There is potential there with the right context, with the right planning, you could come up with something that would work. But you can also see that there are still major writing problems in the model. For example, we have Leo clutched the small worn teddy bear clutched in his hand. And that repetition that comes from the model is still there. And the same with the 1.5 Pro. I'd still say the writing is fairly basic. It's nowhere near the kind of creativity that you could get with the Claude 3.5 sonnet. Okay, continuing with the theme of creativity, I want to look at some practical examples in terms of it coming up with product descriptions, creative brainstorming, um, and seeing whether there has been an improvement in that. So I'm just going to add a prompt here that says, I'm a small business owner creating product description for my website. Generate a concise and engaging product description for an eco-friendly reusable water bottle. And I'm going to run that across these two models. Okay, so if we look at the comparisons between the two, well, Gemini 1.5 Pro decided that just one description would be sufficient. It's come back with something really quite basic, stay hydrated sustainably, and then our eco-friendly water bottle is crafted from durable BPA-free material designed for a lifetime of refills. Odyssey quite a basic description. So with the Gemini Experimental 1121 model, we see that it's come back with four different options. And they're actually quite interesting options. So we've got hydrate consciously, ditch single plastic and embrace our sleek, eco-friendly water bottle. And option two tells us that it's focusing on style and functionality, stay stylishly hydrated. Um, option three, your last water bottle, eco-friendly, durable and stylish save money, stay healthy, quite basic here. But you can see that there are potential options that you could build on. So I think it actually does quite well with this creative brainstorming. So I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.